up. I mean, I'm still the past uh, month uh, uh, up a big percentage in the past month. Yeah. So um, I'm just riding the waves up and down. I'm not trying to day trade or anything like that. It's still way up. It's still God, up it's for the day, but it's seems wild. It's so fishy. Like they, they ride it up, so they're all betting on the up, and then they probably short it and talk to all their buddies and like, hey, we're going to sell off right now, and then they profit on that as well. A thousand percent and then what people, happens. people like you – and not people like you, but people who believe in crypto as like a their retirement account. I bet some some people have crypto as their number one retirement yes. account, and then they're the ones that get screwed by all these big whales, uh, you know, riding it up and then selling off. And, and the people that get screwed mainly, I think, are the people that bought it. Bought it. They bought it at like the when crypto was at like. 61 because they saw bull and they go up to six they got excited and then it sold off and went back down so i think those are mainly the people that little run that got screwed um if you hold it again it's going to be back to 64 next yeah. week or the, the month so i'm not super worried about it i always tell you and everybody it's either like crypto is literally going to be worth 10 million dollars one day or zero i'm fine with either one i'm gonna ride well, it out we'd rather one of the other yes yeah. but I, uh but I he, prefer one, but that's right. It's just a little extra income. We're not betting our life savings no. on on crypto, right? No. But um, yeah. So what what's the crypto company? The um, the custodian that went out of business. Uh, uh, Binance. Uh, FTX. FTX. Yeah. yeah. So um, that is where that that my concern lies. Like, who are we holding these assets with? Yes. And then once they sell off and have to shell out cash to people that are selling off. Are they using your cash, cash to, to give to other people because they're the ones that's selling off? It's just, and then where does your money go? It's like, unregulated. That's the scary wild. part about it. And yeah. if, if you're just joining, let us know where you're from. Throw it in the chat box and also let us know um, if you invest in crypto or not. So, yeah, I think it's one of those things where I, if you understand that the system is rigged and you're okay with it because you're in for the long haul. I mean, some people would take crypto and say that's like the government or the stock market there's some rigged effect to pretty much everything with yeah. the people controlling whether it be like legitimately like people in like the woods all these wealthy people or just general like companies that control everything the system's rigged understand that play within the guidance limits of the rigging and then just don't try to get in and out like, yeah and yeah and understanding that yeah you can't control it and it's probably controlled by some higher being mm -hmm. right and whether you know instead of saying F that I'm not going to get in it and utilize it to your advantage to get wealthy. Uh, they just they just don't get in the game at all. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to real estate, I think too. Yeah, so just let it ride as my as my goal. Just you know, let it go up to whatever it's going to go up to. Um, I mean, I have people tell me to like pull out, take your wins, take your profits as it goes up, whatever. But I'm just let it ride yeah yeah you should have sold but you couldn't i could you, you mentioned it right before that right too. yeah it was say bitcoins at like sixty three thousand, maybe yeah. 62 63 i was like i should just pull out like a hundred and then but then what if it keeps going and i was like i'm not trying to day trade and time it but that would i actually would have timed it perfectly but i almost guarantee you Lucas, and then you can go take those profits and rebuy i almost guarantee you timothy lucas walls that had i pulled out it would have kept going up Mm, it's usually I can just the opposite. <laughs> yes. Well, when you pull, yeah, I don't like to pull out ever. But um, if I would have sold crypto, it would not have bottomed out. It would have kept going. Guaranteed. No, that's a bad way to look at it. Guaranteed. You were one of those whales that they're talking about. So I'm, it would have affected the Bitcoin market so much. Every time I've tried to time it, it's in the exact opposite. Yeah, I, I never day trade or time it. Just dump it in, dump it in, dump it in. And and I feel like, and I don't know if we're going to rant on this a little bit in our, in our headlines, but I feel like people get excited about investments at the wrong freaking time. Like, as soon as it starts to skyrocket and when it's, like, mid-skyrocket or even at the peak, that's when everybody gets, like, excited about it. And that's, like, you're so late to the game at that point. Buy, if you believe in Bitcoin or any investment, buy it when it's low and when everybody's dogging it. That's when you should stock up. Old and, Warren Buffet. Yeah. What did yeah. he say? Uh, he says a lot of stuff. He's got a lot of great quotes. What is his best one? My favorite Warren Buffet Buffet, gosh, gosh darn it, uh, quote is, um, instead of buying okay companies at excellent prices, buy excellent companies at fair prices. Um, so that's my favorite Buffett that's quote. That's a good I was going with, when other people are greedy, yeah. be selfish or whatever. When other people are greedy, be scared. When other people yes. are scared, be greedy. So that's the same thing. So when, when real estate bombed in 08, some people thought the real estate was never coming back like smart people when um, COVID when it dipped after that some people thought real estate was never coming back so yeah. like that's when you buy and like 
I think I got a couple Bitcoin now, and my goal was to buy one when it was like sixty thousand. I was yeah. slowly buying it, but I think I bought a couple and it was like eighteen thousand. Yeah. And then when when I think Ethereum was like a thousand. Yeah. And now they've tripled. Whether whether it's the the stock market or Bitcoin, you know, I I do think it's going to be um, a strong year for financial markets with the with the election year not wanting anything to to, to pull back, you know, and it's going to be interesting. But I, I don't think it's too late to the game for ever, you know what no. I mean? Like there's always a new bottom, a new standard, and everything can go up from there. Like if if you look at um, I don't know. Uh, Facebook, Meta, Meta, Meta Group. And, uh, you know, I bought that when it was like $120 a share. I think today it's in the 400s. Um, and, it, and if I looked at that and be like, oh, it'll never be 120 again. You're right. It won't. Or that's too expensive. Why would I pay that when I bought it for 120 It's a new floor. Mm-hmm. And then it just hopefully can only go up from there. It's not always the case, obviously. But if it's got good fi- fundamentals, like, go ahead. Well, you can't time it. And yeah. I guess Friday, my boy Taylor, he did a video that, like, he did. He does a lot of more research than I do in video. I just kind of vomit out my mouth and it works sometimes works doesn't he does actual actual research for every video yeah. you guys will end up you know tag teaming me probably on friday so i'll be fighting the good fight but in general he did a, he did like a whole study on like when when stocks hit like previous highs you know obviously but like if if you were to buy at the high or wait until the low and buy you're better off buying at the high because you get that extra up you get that little bit before you time the actual you know yeah. before it starts to dip it goes up and down but buying at the height is better you're going to get a better you're return in, t- in it longer yes right buying at the height you're in it longer you're going to get a better return than t- trying to time the yeah. lows even assuming you do time it like yeah. i don't think he means if you time the exact height and the exact bottom that's impossible yeah. so realistically it's better to buy meta now then wait six months to buy Meta. Yeah, in in Bitcoin and you know uh, equities, they fluctuate a lot more than like real estate does. Mm-hmm. That's why I love real estate because you're not going to have a day that's five percent, ten percent, twenty percent drop. Gracious, like, no. You know what I mean? So that that could take a year, uh, one one way or the other. So. Um, Yes, uh, it's a little more interesting when we try to take our real estate minds and put it towards uh, other financial markets, but uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, the, well, yeah. the thing about the markets, they're they're priced daily. Real yeah. estate's not priced I mean, daily. I mean, not even daily, yeah. like si- like live. They're priced live, and real yeah. estate's not that. That I mean, real estate doesn't do that really. I mean, technically, I guess it kind of does, but that it would be interesting to see like it has some REITs and stuff that kind of are the closest yeah, thing to the that, closest, probably. but it's yeah. not like the actual value of this building That'd or any building wild. is not sure, is not priced. It, it doesn't do that. fluctuate that and much. And you could like buy shares of like any building. Let's do the it. They can buy shares of this building. That'd be sick. We that would be do sick, that, actually. Yeah. So the the crypto is a wild ride. Let's see where it's at right now. During this conversation. It has gone up three hundred dollars. So nice. Two, uh, Proud of you. Thank you. I'm just I'm putting all my money on this. So what it, what it said, Lucas, was I had a zero balance for like an hour and a half, and I couldn't buy or sell anything. It said site degraded performance. We appreciate your patience. We're beginning to see improvement in customer trading due to increased traffic. Some customers will still maybe still see errors. Which platform are you on? Uh, Coinbase. Coinbase. I think I'm on Robinhood. Um, Coinbase issues now let me just well, google that it's gonna yeah it's gonna uh, have some for sure oh yeah one base experience is <laughs> coinbase wall street journal an hour ago coinbase users experience issues as bitcoin price rises um coinbase crashes due to technical issues after That's... bitcoin touches 36k amid ferocious bitcoin rally a Coinbase snafu shows zero dollar balances for customers. That's what it did for me, dude. That's wild. You're freaking national news with that's, what you're talking about. That's like, oh, we now we got we got Nigeria in the house. Nice, yeah. Remy. Thanks for joining. So yeah, that's just a, a wild thing that happened, and it just happened. So we I had some other rant I wanted to open with, but I think that that is an interesting one, timely. super timely, and yeah. uh, it, it happened to me. And I will. No one could convince me it was a, it was a uh, not a an intentional issue. Yeah, it was. I it agree, was, thousand percent. Yeah. I, I log into my crypto account twice a week for the past three years, and it's never once been zero balance because it is yeah. because of that that quick raise. And I don't know if the whales have that much control, even that they make it to where they did it, on it purpose. It was a wild morning. Or it's crypto. or it's just like a something that happens, like if it goes down that much, they shut it down, or if it was actually controlled or it tripped something. But either way, it was intentional. Yeah, it's like what I remember. I think this is a Warren Buffett quote. Please out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it is when the tide goes out, you find out who's been swimming naked. <laughs> I don't know if that's Buffett or not, but I love that, that quote. That is a good quote. That's yeah. called being over leveraged. Yes, or overconfident. And hopefully or, the water. Or just is, like 
putting well, on a front. Hopefully the water's warm. It could be. Go, it, it could uh, go for like fake gurus. Well, as ha- well oh too. yeah, we're gonna do your topics on that as soon as yeah. I get my hat. But what? Hopefully the water's warm. As soon as you get your hat, you want to talk about that at all? No. You got a we'll hat. Wait. The MAGA hat. Yeah, MAGA hat. Okay. Um, not okay. MAGA. MAGA. <laughs> not going there. I mean, same theme though. But yeah, it's just it's just a play on words. But yeah. um, did you get my warm water? If you're swimming naked, you I want the water to be that. warm. Do you? Yeah. Well, unless it's a bunch of urine. But, like, if it's cold, there's shrinkage. There's lots of it for yeah. me. Yeah, it just sucks <laughs> her back in. Yeah, that's, All why, right, that's so, why I set my pool to 90. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> just in case I accidentally. Yeah. Like, my pool's a 95. All right, so that was opening rant. We're going to get into REI school here in a minute. We're going to talk about leverage. We're going to teach you how to use leverage to create wealth for you. We're going to get into some current headlines. Apple's got some stuff going on. The U.S. Army's got some stuff going on. Wendy's has some crazy stuff going on. I'm kind of avoiding a snafu in their part. Then we're going to get to Riddle. I'm going to make Lucas look stupid, true and false. Yeah. And then we're going to get into our deal of the week. I'm super excited about this one. We are going to talk about our very, very first deal. We're going to break down the numbers, what happened. So anyways, this is we got a stacked, jacked, and packed episode for you. My voice is really freaking cool. It sounds better. Does it? Yeah, I think you're working through it. I got like a I got a webinar tonight for uh, people that are thinking about signing up for a mentorship, like that aren't quite convinced. So I got to talk all night. Yeah, it's gonna be. Yeah, you don't you don't use your voice much, so you're good. No, I know, yeah. right? Goodness yeah. gracious, I talk so much. It's like a singer losing his it's, voice. It's obno- like Taylor Swift losing her voice. It's like what what else do you do? I heard what else why, do you have I heard white was wine talk? white wine was good for. Even though I'm the guy that's known to not talk in his TikTok videos, but still, oh, that's funny. Um, white wine's good for your. So you're going to chug some, uh, what do you think's what in that? here? Savion Blanc? Vidal? Are, if, did you put white wine in your Stanley? Mm-hmm. Did you hear that stuff about Stanley, about having like traces of lead? Uh-uh. It would be a good headline we should do. We'll look at that days. one next yeah. time. All right, so that's what we got for you. We got a stacked episode. Um, let's get into REI school right now. So we're going to teach you um, about real estate investing, and we're going to talk about leverage because, Lucas, I think – Leverage is the number one skill of successful people, in my opinion. You're going to get where I'm going. You haven't seen the slides yet, so this will be fun to get you. But leverage, in my opinion, I think is the number one tool of successful people because there's multiple forms of leverage, Lucas. So before I show you my three forms of leverage, what do you think types of forms of leverage there are? Yeah, and uh, maybe this is answering your question, but I'm going to take it a little different Of course you are, because you never listen to me. I think utilizing... um, other people's money okay whether it's you know leverage or forms of equity or whatever but not being so proud uh that hey i can do it on my own right and just bootstrap it all the way to become an apple like that's not possible right they they became a you know an ipo for a reason so they could get an influx of cash other people's cash. other people's cash and go deploy that cash so they'll give up a little bit of ownership uh in order to get a boatload of cash in order to go dump that in to other research and development projects so you think leverage other people's money is where we're going absolutely but i think you have to be a, a great s- steward of other people's money as well and i think that's a I, I, there's people that like almost feel shamed to take other people's money and go utilize it and make money for that other person. But like, it's like a part of a DNA. We love it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's one of the reasons that allowed us to um, grow our business so quickly. Oh, hundred percent. So you're thinking the only form of leverage is money. Oh no. You didn't I, answer my question I always say all. leverage what you don't have. And I love it. that. We're going to get in that later. Don't yeah. We? Or leverage what you don't have. We're getting that later. No, all sorry. Right. Leverage what you have. Leverage, leverage what, what you, you have. have and leverage what you don't have. Yeah. Do a little bit of both. All right. So let's talk about the current state of affairs. So right now, Lucas, here's some stats for you. The median household income in the country is $75,000, okay? Okay. So let's say you save 10% of your money, which is a lot. Before taxes? Yeah. So $7,500 a year you save and invest, right? Yeah. It's a lot of money for someone making $75,000, I think, right? That's a big chunk. That's a good chunk. If you're investing 10% of your... In gross income, yeah. that's a good number for people to I, start with. I agree. So that's what um, that's a Remy's lot of money, going to That's what? like 600 bucks I know. a month, right? So that's why I'm using that as an example because I think people are going to make more money, but we're going to keep the 7500 So if you invest $7,500 a year for 15 years at an 8% stock market return, you get $297,000 after 15 years. Okay? Okay. So if you invest it for 30 years, 
you get nine hundred forty three thousand dollars. Yeah. So pretty good. You almost have a million dollars thirty years in. Yeah. However, the issue with that is you use two hundred twenty five thousand dollars to get nine hundred forty three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Now let's talk about leverage. This is why you need leverage. We're going to use it with real estate. If you buy one rental property that's worth two hundred fifty grand yeah. that you owe two hundred grand on. Not out of the realm of possibilities, right? Sounds very similar to what we've done. Yes. So you can do that. You get 50 grand equity off the bat. Cool. But 15 years in, the property is worth 500 grand. Mm-hmm. You owe 100 grand. So you have 400 grand equity 15 years in. You beat the 297 grand of cash. 30 years in, 15 years later, it's worth a million. You owe zero. So you beat the $943,000. So I guess just the point is you can invest $225,000 and be $943,000 richer, or you can invest $0 and leverage properly and be a million dollars richer. And you can use that 225 grand to live. You can spend $7,500 a year on Austin vacation, redoing certain things or investing in other strategies, or you can do both. But the point is if you leverage, you can crush using cash, even in an incredible 8% return in the stock market. Stock market's a better like annualized return than real estate. Just real estate, you get all these other benefits we're going to talk about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I articulate that well? Super Enough? Super well. Clear as is class. Clear as my stupid voice will let me? Yeah. Okay. So, th- so that's the current state of affairs. I guess the whole point of this is it's really hard to get ahead right now traditionally investing. Investing in the stock market, investing in crypto, what it does, it's, it's really hard to get ahead saving money and investing money. Yeah. Especially like, you know... <sighs> There, there are ways to accelerate it, right? Um, and leverage is one of those ways. Um, it, yeah. And if you're if you're not open to using leverage, it's it's gonna be a, a long haul, which is fine. Yeah, it's you not know? a bad thing. But if you want more, that's where I always. That's yes. my assumption is people listening want financial freedom. They want financial independence. They want to live life now and not have to pinch yeah. pennies and they don't want to retire when they're 65. So that's just an assumption that I probably should state more. Yeah. But I just assume you want financial stability and control like sooner rather than later. That's yeah. always my assumption. Like like unbelievable financial ability and control. To do whatever you want, yes. whatever you want. I'm assuming yeah. people want that. Does anybody, yeah. if you're listening on um, uh, uh, Facebook or, or um, YouTube, comment, do you want like financial security? And ask questions because we're going to get to Q&A here in a little bit. So that's our, our current sad state of affairs, Lucas. All right, let's get into, there's three types of leverage in my opinion. You leverage other people's skills. Mm-hmm. You leverage other people's knowledge. knowledge and you leverage ever. Th- you leverage other people's money. So those yeah. are the three types of leverage. That's what I was trying to get you to guess earlier when you said money. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, let's get into some examples. So leverage skills. Why do you need to leverage skills? Because you can't be good at everything and efficient at everything and it allows more, more scaling. So talk a little bit about leveraging skills. Oh, yeah. It, when it, like when it uh, applies to real estate, you're talking? And just in general, leverage. Yeah. So uh, say, yeah, if there's a skill that is needed for um, building your rental portfolio, I'll, I'll relate it to that, and uh, you don't have it, um, it doesn't mean that you can't do that investment strategy. It means that you got to find someone who, who can, mm-hmm. right? So um, simple example, uh, if you're looking to rehab a house uh, and make money on that house via sale or put it in your portfolio and build in a whole bunch of equity, but you don't know how to rehab, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Let's find someone that knows how to rehab, uh, get those skills in place that you don't know how to do, um, and uh, yeah, hire someone that knows what they're doing and has those skill sets. Yeah, you're leveraging other people's skills. I always like joke, like we have 40 employees that work eight hours a day, so we're leveraging their skills for 320 hours of work every single day. So you're leveraging other people's skills because, again, like I said at the beginning of the slide, you we, you can't be good at everything, no. you and you shouldn't no. try to be good at everything. It's not efficient to think that you're going to be good at every single aspect of business sure. or real estate doesn't matter you have to get okay with using other people's skills and leveraging their skills they're going to get part of leverage there's an usually some type of equal, equal transfer reciprocation good word yeah. our employees get paid wages they have a really great pl- place to work but they put in 320 hours worth of work every single day for for our, our company but they get Re, re, you know, reciprocate for sure. And, for and their needs normally trading skills. Some the reciprocation comes in form of paying, mm-hmm. right? You pay yeah. for these skills one way or another. Whether it's a team member, employee, uh, uh, a contractor, you're going to pay that person in you know hopes and 
a, a plan to receive a return on what you've paid them in the future. Yes, for sure. The goal is to make a profit on their skills. So yeah. some examples we talked about a little bit earlier, employees and contractors. Again, you're not going to be able to do everything in a project, nor should you. So yeah. leveraging other people's skills just allows for speed, it allows for efficiency, and it allows for things to be done the right way yeah. and happen in a meaningful period of time. Uh, attorneys, like if you get sued, uh, for anything in the world, are you just going to be like, hey, I got this? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just go up to the <laughs> yeah. judge and be like, your honor. And yet, and to understand that it's okay to not have every skill in the world. Yeah, get over your ego yeah. like we talked a little bit earlier. All right, so like I said a little bit earlier, allows you to buy time and efficiency. And the thing I love about it, Lucas, is you can you like learn from other people's getting efficient with their with their skills. So I like that. So, And you can learn from, like, if you want to, there's certain skills you might want to learn. And you you pay for that skills and then you're able to maybe learn from them and then take those over as your skills grow if that's one skill you want to develop cool all right so we'll stick this slide this slide's supposed to say leverage knowledge not leverage skills so the second thing is leverage knowledge so leveraging knowledge allows you to buy other people's time somebody spent time learning something and you're leveraging um, that time and you're, you're literally when you well, all of this leverage you're just buying time is what you're doing not having to spend the time doing it yourself you you physically cannot know everything and the beautiful thing about leveraging other people's knowledge Lucas is you learn from their mistakes does that make sense like you're like yeah. they already made the mistakes and they're giving you're you the knowledge pay, you to not. This lie, you're gonna pay for it one way or another yeah so whether you pay for it in the forms of actually paying someone or not paying someone and making the mistake and paying for it that way a hundred percent so um Allows time to buy efficiency. We're out of it, T. Juwak. All right, there you go. Some examples. So leverage other people's knowledge. So there's YouTube, there's podcasts. Um, so like people are learning from all of our, like we did a whole last week's episode was the entire episode was on all the screw ups we've done over the last few years, all the issues we've made. So people are hopefully after watching last week's episode, go watch it if you haven't um, on YouTube or the podcast. But like we talked about a ton of issues with not raising enough money. So other people listen to our podcast for free and hopefully on their next deal or their first deal, they're going to raise a little bit more money so they don't have all the issues that we had. Yep. So, um, and then, and then coaching is, is a big part of leveraging other people's knowledge. We've learned a lot over the years. So once you learn other people's, um, you know, or once you have other people's knowledge, you're just, you're just going to, you have to pay for it. Like we alluded to earlier, Lucas, you pay for education either way. You either pay for it through inefficiencies, um, you pay for it in lack of profit. Like maybe you bought a property, you overpaid a little bit, you over rehabbed a little bit, took longer than you thought, and you made 25 grand. Good for you. But with the right coach, maybe you bought it right, did it faster, and did it and didn't do as much rehab, and you made 50 grand. So, but paid five grand for coaching. You yeah, still come out on top. 20 grand yeah. ahead. Yes, exactly. So that's that's where you have to get over your ego. Nobody, if you think you can do this efficiently on your own right away, you're wrong. That's probably why you haven't started because um, you have an ego and you think like, you know, all gurus are scammer, whatever, whatever you think, you're not going to be efficient right off the bat. So paying for that knowledge or getting it for free through stuff like this is, is worth its weight in gold. Keep, keep the questions coming, Ryan. I love that question. We'll, we'll get into that here. You want to get into it now or you want to wait? Yeah, I don't mind answering that one uh, now. Get it, read it, read question. it, read so, an answer. So Ryan asks, thanks for asking this question, man. Uh, how should we determine the quality of rehabs for rentals? Should the bear, uh, spend the bare minimum, go all out on the nicest stuff, uh, or somewhere in between? Um, man, this is such a good question, and there's so many ways we can answer it. But um, in general, I think I think there's two sides when we talk about this. Like you want number one, you want something in a rental property that's that's durable, and then on this on the other side of thing, like cosmetically, you want it to be appealing and nice for for the new home uh, tenant for the new tenant. So. The good news is most of the things that are more durable are nicer stuff like mm -hmm. uh, hardwood floors or luxury vinyl plank in lieu of carpet. Um, granite countertops are going to last longer than uh, Formica or laminate 100%. Uh, a little nicer quality cabinet is going to last longer and look nicer. So a lot of times those go hand in hand. Um, I would probably recommend, but, but what you don't need is like fancy chandeliers. Um, um, what's another example of stuff that you, you don't need that's like super nice? Um, I mean, like simple things like you don't know, oh, like a like a touch uh, faucet or, or like so. soft closed. You can get those that come with the cabinets, but that's yeah. also something. Yeah, soft fun. closed doors not necessarily going to improve the lifespan of, of the cabinets. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so a lot of times those go hand in hand. Um, 
I would err on the side of make it a little more durable and a little more nicer up front, especially if you can fit that in your rehab budget. And then um, make sure on the back end that um, it's going to cash flow if you spend that that number, right? So if you buy a house and you spend twenty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars on the same house, that's probably a realistic thing that you could do. Mm -hmm. You could go spend twenty, 100%. or you could go spend fifty. Um, but you got to make sure that uh, you're thinking about the lifespan of only if you only spend twenty thousand and how much more, because you're going to get closer to that fifty over time, no matter what. But uh, w and what the rent is going to yield on that twenty thousand dollar rehab versus yeah. the fifty thousand. Yeah, rehab. I look at it as like I would lean a little bit nicer, but don't go too nice. And look at the competition out there. If you're in, an, in a, a nice neighborhood that other rentals have certain things like granite and fence and yards, you're going to want to do that because you yeah. want to be slightly nicer than your competition, whether you're selling or renting because good tenants have options. So I would the other thing I would add to what Lucas said, along with what he already said, is make things a little bit um, nicer than the competition, but don't overdo it. If the if the every every house in the neighborhood, Lucas, or every house in the area, um, you know, has you know carpet and like you know kind of like vinyl stuff, then yeah. that's fine. You don't need to do like brand new hardwood and and you know marble yeah. everywhere. So we, just look at what's out there. We've had better luck. We so we have rental properties in multiple types of sub markets, right? We have we have C C class areas, which is you know working class, and then you have A class areas, which is you know really nice almost luxury type stuff and we've had better luck maximizing the rent with a nice product in a um maybe not as nice sub market versus in a really nice market trying to be the cheapest yeah. in that market so um yeah if you're gonna lean on one side lean on the side a little bit nice yes cool keep the questions coming if you got any more all right, so leverage money now. So this is this is the big one. So yeah. what does it mean um, to leverage money? It means go into debt. It means you're taking somebody else's money. Doesn't matter how they get it for this example, but you're taking somebody else's money and you're using it to buy something. You can use it to buy a car. You can use it to buy a boat. Mm, you don't can do that. you can use it to buy um, real estate. You can art, use it to buy artwork. Art. Uh, I don't, somebody give Shoes. you a loan for artwork loan for shoes yeah i guess so that's credit card debt i guess technically but borrowing money um to buy something is leveraging so why would you need to borrow money to buy something uh, people borrow money because they don't have 100 percent of the purchase price exactly they don't have you don't have it. you borrow money yeah. to buy something that you don't have the money to buy most likely yeah and even if you do like we do for a lot of things we still borrow because we see the benefits of it. yep so that's why people borrow money is because they don't have the money to do it all right, um, so um, examples of money leverage. So the examples of real estate money leverage, Lucas, the main places to go, private lenders, hard money lenders, banks, lines of credit, anything else. Again, this is this is the examples. You're using other people's money. Private lenders, you're using somebody else's like money, their line of credit, their IRA directed towards you, their, um, their cash, their CD, that just whatever. Banks, you're using bank money, obviously, and hard money, you're, you're using other people's like arbitrage money, and then lines of credit could be on anything. So you're just getting sources of other people's money. I love it. Nothing to add to that yeah, one? Yeah, I, I got something to add. I don't know if it's on the next slide or not. So, um, yeah, uh, so this is just wrapping them all up, right? Uh, yeah, there's a couple more slides, but this is general wrapping up leverage. Uh, go yeah. back to that last slide for me, Sam. So, yeah, so, w the, the, so utilizing other people's money, specifically when it comes to real estate, there's, there's two types of financing. There's two types of other people's money that we're going to want to use, right? Y you need the short-term other people's money, which is, you know, the buy and the rehab pretty much yep. the purchase price and the rehab cost short term that's that's your private lenders and your hard money lenders right for the most part um, could be lines of credit as well long term side of things if you're executing the burst strategy you're going to need to put that refinance out that short term money and put it on some long term debt and that's when your local lender comes into place your local banks or your DSCR lenders so uh, two very different types of other people money that you need both of them to execute the full burst strategy exactly and then obviously the, like every episode there's um uh d douchebag scammers so i'm not telling you to inbox me anybody on here Remy or anybody like that, that's a scammer faster freedom account. Yeah, is that a space and a lowercase f? Well yeah, yeah, they they can you can make that name whatever you want. They could have copied it exactly. They're yeah. just lazy and low life pieces of shit. So they copy uh they try copy it over. So yeah. Can't control all the fake accounts on 
uh, Facebook. All right, so how we use leverage. So we, we use all three leverage. I kind of alluded to it, we use other people's skills uh, via you know contractors, employees, team members. We use other people's knowledge. We listen to other people. We read books. We pay 100 grand a year to be in masterminds and mentorships and coaching programs. And then we obviously use other people's money to buy real estate. Obviously. So, obviously. Yeah. So it buys us time and scale. Like if we were to save money, do the work ourselves, and pay cash for everything, mm -hmm. how much real estate do you think we would own? Uh, we own 47 million now. Um, just pay cash for everything. I mean, we're not leveraging, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, two, three million? Yeah, or 15 times that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and I think you know there is a balance. If we, as we've seen, as we've grown, of you know not being over leveraged as well, and making sure you got a, a good loan to value, and you're not your your debt payments aren't outpacing your rental income. Mm -hmm. You know, so always be analyzing that. Um, but in general, this is this is a huge part of what what we teach. People come to us all the time. Uh, all of our students are like how should we get started in real estate? What investment should we go after? Is it uh, wholesale? Is it is it fix and flip? Is it rentals? And, I'm, and I get it because there's real estate so broad and it's hard to really narrow a focus. But uh, there, there's two things I talk about narrowing that focus is what is your why? Why, do you, why are you in real estate in, in the beginning? And then leverage what you have, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you have a demanding full-time job, a demanding family, but some awesome income, then go ahead, use that money for down payment. Maybe you don't have the time to go out there and hustle and find these uh, distressed properties, but maybe you're a little younger, don't have a family yet, but you don't have the income to support down payments and, and leveraging. Um, so uh, you, you leverage your time and your energy and go out there and hustle and find those properties. So. Depending on what you have, that's what you should go out there and, and make it multiply. For sure. I like it. Um, so ex no picks. All right. So example, um, leverage at scale. So like um, so like scale, like super, super high scale levers, like uh, like Musk. Uh, Elon Musk has leveraged his way to 250 billion or whatever he's worth. He how you don't he didn't just like go to the fed and print money and just put it in his wallet and leave in his in his tesla right he leveraged money he leveraged um he leveraged his tesla stock to buy x he got banks and and uh, lenders and, and um, investors involved to buy x he's leveraged um to to get into tesla he leveraged money so he you borrow money and grow and scale like i would say apple's usually sitting on about 200 billion in cash yeah. and about a hundred billion in debt. Obviously, it fluctuates in general. That's around what it is. They could pay off their debt twice over, but why don't they? Because they understand the power of leverage and the scalability of leverage. Yeah, and obviously, all debt is not created equal. So mm -hmm. you want good debt with good terms. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, appetized to pay it off. Like who knows what that interest rate is on Apple's debt, right? Yeah. Two, three, four, five percent. Mm -hmm. Why the heck would you pay that off when it, when inflation's been at nine percent the past two years? Yeah. Right. So you're you're making money uh, by utilizing someone else's money instead of letting that sit in a savings account and diminish. Yeah. And, and uh, the other example I like to talk about Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg started Facebook. He started his dorm room. It was it was what it was. It was catching fire, but it wasn't like profitable. They needed more manpower. They needed more coding. They needed more yeah. mind to make it more profitable. So he got a loan from Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel gave him money. He increased the um, flow of people into Facebook, increased the ad revenue, and Peter Thiel had ownership, but gave it gave Peter Thiel. So you just if you're leveraging other people's money to grow or scale or start something, and whatever you grew, scale or started, creates more, then that's leverage and that's how people create wealth nobody just you know works hard saves their money and 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 you yeah. know creates wealth that way you can get by that way but you're not going to create wealth that yeah way. and that's very standard for pretty much every startup mm -hmm. right they they raise some money and deploy that into manpower and research and development and they have a plan to get to profitability at some point unfortunately most don't yeah but in order to do something amazing you got to take a swing right can it home run with your bad shoulder, shoulder Lucas. babe ruth said that right sam prim said that <laughs> all right so how do you use it responsibly oh i love this dude's question too so we okay, can get we, to the question first. yeah so x uh, said he has uh five single family houses a three have a mortgage uh after portfolio loan i'll get 200k cash back but only make a thousand dollars a month 
cash flow for five single families. How much cash flow do you look for when you're fully leveraged? So um, I think that's a beautiful spot to be with five properties. We look for about $200 a month per property. So you are right there with that $1,000 a month uh, for those for those five and you'll have 200k in your pocket to go deploy or utilize or keep as reserves um i think that's a great play and that's what i would do um well, there was one other thing i thought he would say, say well he wants to scale scale, scale. we'll use that 200k so how you can use that 200k to scale is you can put 20 percent down on a million dollar complex yep. you can use that as rehab funds go to hard money lenders they're going to want a down payment and they're going to be a pain to use rehab funds so you can do two or three projects at a time with a hard money lender and use your cash to like fill the gaps of their monthly payment or the rehab funds because you're going to get it back when you sell or refinance or you can just have it there and um, be able to a private lender a hard money lender is more likely to lend you money with 200k in the yeah. bank and just that shows the beauty and power of real estate right there five properties that's it dude's going to be able to pull out or 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 woman two hundred thousand dollars like those are numbers that some people will never be able to even see or touch in their lives by yep. owning five yep you know what i mean so uh just just buy rental real estate and hold on and then those are the type of things that you're able to execute when you can control that portfolio and when you're in it when you're in the rental property game, you have to understand that cash flow is not going to be sexy. The, yeah. he, he said only a thousand bucks a month. That's about what you'll have to do if you're using none of your own money to do this. So you're not going to make a ton of cash flow at first buying rental properties. Just the, the numbers just don't add. The math just not there. Yeah. Awesome. So we talked about this a little early, Lucas, but leverage what you have and then leverage what you need. Like it's it's a different way to look at leverage, but yeah. it's, it's I same think, thing. Yeah. Yeah. You have money, leverage that and use that. You don't have yep. money, leverage other people's. Then. Exactly. So where are you leveraging from yourself or someone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But leverage, like it's just super, super, um, super, super important skill to have. Um, and then always have a safety. And obviously don't try not to over leverage. I think the general financial system helps avoid that. It did it in 08. It has now like the type of loans and how much they'll give you. It's, it's pretty protected, I feel like. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. So common mistakes are not giving, sticking your numbers and giving up. Yeah. What do you think about those mistakes? Yeah, uh, those those are big, right? Um, you know, emotion is a big part of uh, human decision making. But when you're analyzing investment property, that is one time that you need to take emotion out of it. Um, stick to your numbers. Don't don't fudge the ARV. Don't fudge the rental rate. Don't fudge the estimated construction cost to to fit your to fit in a mold that you think is going to be perfect. So uh, give yourself a little buffer on all three of those things, and uh, it's going to work out for you. Perfect. All right. What about giving up? You got anything to say? Is that a common mistake you've seen? It is. The number one mistake people make is giving up. If you don't give up, you will eventually get there for sure. Don't you think? Yeah. All right, Lucas. Prim. You ready to do some credit headlines? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So um, Apple... Apple cancels plans for electric guitar. C electric car. We should have the, the Drake song pop up for headlines. Like just for like a little bit. Why? Drake song pop up? For headlines. Because that's it's one of his most popular songs ever. It's I don't know if we have the rights for that. But oh, yeah. UMG, right? I mean, yeah, he's probably with UMG, yeah. Yeah, F those guys. F those guys. But anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Apple cancels playing for the electric car. They've actually been working on that for a while. Since 2014, they've been hiring and headhunting and stealing um, car manufacturers and EV people from around other businesses and put a lot of money into mm. it, and they're pulling the cord. <laughs> I like that. We'll see what you did there. I don't think you clever. even noticed it, <laughs> but it was good. Uh, yeah, it seems a little outside of their niche in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the bigger, the, one of their bigger focuses was the, the self-driving aspect of it. And uh, I don't know if you have to have the actual car to have the self-driving software. To me, it would have been cooler if they focused more on the self-driving aspect and then you know put that into other electric vehicles of some sort. I guess it doesn't even have to be electric to get self-driving, no, right? Mm -mm. Um, so that would have been well, cool. To, It'd be easier. Yeah, I think. a lot easier. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think, I think maybe maybe that was their idea because we've seen a lot of bigger car companies kind of put the brakes 
on uh, the EV production and maybe Apple seeing that and maybe those would have been some of their customers for some of the software that they're developing and like, hey, who are we going to sell this to? We're spending billions developing it. Maybe we should put the brakes on it as well. What, what, it's an electric car. What do you call the pedal on the right? It's not a gas pedal. Oh, that's funny. Accelerator. Accelerate pedal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think throttle. this. Throttle. Uh, yeah, throttle. Apple usually. Go. The goer. The goer. Apple usually does a pretty good job with like sticking in like what they do. But also part of their company strength and values is trying new things. Like yeah. the iPhone was a new Think thing. differently. They weren't. Yeah, they weren't in the. They weren't in the iPhone. They were in the, the phone space. That yeah. could have been a flop. They, you know, So they try things, and this is a little bit out of the realm, but I think part of the beauty of what they are is they're willing to try things. It sounds like this one was a pretty hefty kick in the nads, but yeah. in general, they tried it. Yeah, two cool things that uh, about this decision to try things. We talk about the, the two-way door decisions versus one-way. and uh, This me, was kind of a one-way. Well, uh, but do you, you see what they did here? It kind of reminds me me of of us and and uh, things that we've tried and then we've been able to shift resources and manpower to other divisions of the company um, and that's what they're able to do so they've hired all these people and now they're gonna keep a lot of these people but but uh, kind of just redirect them to the AI division correct that's what they're saying now yeah in reality maybe it's not as perfect as yes probably I, some people it probably kind of different Yes, that's my point is that's the more of a, a headline saver. So what they're saying is all the people that worked on this uh, EV division called mm -hmm. Titan, Project Titan, they're going to repurpose them to, into yeah. AI, but they've already got people in AI, I guarantee it. So maybe some people, like the yeah. higher level people there, but I guarantee there's going to be a lot of layoffs. For sure. Cool. All right, so Lucas, yes. you read the next one. Are we going to the next one? Do you want Two to down, skip? army. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna skip our Bitcoin because Sam gave us a great rant on that about how they put a hold on his let's, account let's, and dropped it to zero. Let's see what see how much and keep going. How much is in there now? All right. Uh, so second headline of today: U.S. Army cutting force by twenty four thousand amid recruiting shortfalls. So yeah. that that it, it, it's almost like an oxymoron to me. Um, like, is it intentional that they're cutting force by uh, 24,000 or do they not have enough people <laughs> to that are recruiting coming in the funnel that it's just natural? They have to. They're they're 24,000 short of their like target. Yeah, I don't know which it is. I I, I don't think this is super alarming. I know 24,000 is a lot of people, but maybe they did like a general look at technology. You know how much they're doing with drones these days where yeah, they don't need people, don't sure. need helicopters, don't need helicopter pilots, don't yeah. need people working on the helicopters. We don't have the biggest force. Uh, like manpower military in the world, but we're the strongest military because of the things because you just of said. technology yeah. and because of things we're always on the cutting edge of that yeah. always and, and are, are willing to, to to make it to make it work either way. So I think twenty four thousand it sounds pretty catchy and it's probably not ideal. Um, I think the goal would probably be not to do that, but I I think with technology and drones what we got going there's not as much manpower needed. Yeah. I mean they're talking about the next wars being like cyber war like all this mm -hmm. stuff. Like, there's not as much like grunt military people needed yeah. to go shoot somebody with a machine gun yeah yeah and i think it is interesting to like uh, when i read this um uh shifting priority right so the priority over the past two decades has been focused on countering terrorism of, and of course it has been since you know 2001 especially mm -hmm. and that's been such a big force and there's been all of these groups you know um isis al-qaeda uh Hamas, right? Or uh, what? What? What are some other? I feel like there's been yeah, there's, ten a, there's of those always coming there, and there going, right? Them, yeah. And that's been such a big force because they're such evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, as the, uh, I think their priority is shifting, is what it says to the um, countering the Chinese and the Russian military, yeah. which is uh, we haven't had a real threat like a country threat mm -hmm. in a while. Yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's always interesting. I feel like. This is one of those things where I try to have what our rent was going to be on and maybe next time be on that perspective. Like there's always like potential wars or wars going on, like what we're experiencing right now, China, U.S., like kind of puffing their feathers a little bit at each other and Russia. That, that, kind of, that kind of stuff always happens. It does. Like there was a time where there was, a, there was n nuclear weapons in Cuba pointed at the United States. That's wild to think about. For years. Yeah, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And they used to – they did – I mean, we read about it. It's yeah, in books, bro. I, and I've seen social studies. Social, 
uh, that's what those hoodies. Yeah. I guess. But I've, you see, like, the drills of in the 70s and 80s where kids, or I guess more like 70s, they'd go underneath their chair in case of atomic bomb. Like, that would mm. be so scary living that time. But again. I thought that was for an earthquake, Sam. No. no Look I, it up. Okay. Well, if it can't, you can't do that right now. But yes. All right. So, this next one's pretty interesting, Wall. So, um, Wendy says it will not implement surge pricing after outcry. So, there, it, it's kind of wild. So, Wendy's was. Uh, they were talking about potentially having dynamic pricing, mm. which is not a good thing for the consumer. If there's an influx of people in the lines, prices would go up because the the demand is uh, is is there for, it and they can charge more. So it, it's kind of an interesting thought process. They're not doing it, but it's kind of wild. All right, I'm gonna take a step back. Okay, from the headline, Dave Thomas, rest in peace. First of all, R.I.P. Dave. It's 22 years he's been gone. And I, I was looking him up before uh, before the show while we're while we're pre gaming here, and uh, man, he's got a friendly face, and he just I just recognized him right away. Old Dave Thomas, that four billion when he passed away, worth that was four your billion. Step back. And if you're watching uh, on YouTube and uh, the other live platforms, um, check out this Wendy's. Like, if you've been to a Wendy's recently, does it look like this? No, no, not at all. It's like faded brick and uh, whatever. But the, you know, we were talking. This looks uh, AI generated. Yeah, it could be. But all of I feel like most restaurants have kind of got this much more modern look yeah. and feel to yeah. them. They're trying to go that way. And so. it takes a while to mm -hmm. like update all their stock. But anyways, I love Wendy's. Yeah, what's uh, your favorite thing to get at Wendy's? They have great burgers. Like I've tried to get like a chicken sandwich there. Don't do it. They're, stick to the burgers. Fresh, never frozen. They have very good burgers, and, the, and their troll account is good too, yeah, right? Yeah, their Instagram troll or whatever. Or they're mainly Twitter, but whatever their troll account is, is oh, pretty good. So good. Um, yeah. So I like the spicy chicken nuggets. Yeah, those are good. They're Sorry. Pretty spicy. If you go nugget route, their nuggets are solid too. Then the, yeah, the spicy ones yeah. are good, and then of course you got to do the frosties. Always really frosties, good. fantastic. They throw in that strawberry frosty every once in a while. I've never it's... seen somebody drink a, eating a vanilla frosty ever in my life. I don't think they have them. Do I think they? they do. I don't think it's a thing. I think it's vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. I think most of the time it's just chocolate. Well, and they have they, the they, option. No, I don't think so. Yes. I don't know. We should look that up. We I thought it was just it chocolate, but when they throw that strawberry in there, fire, and their fries are great, so you can dip that in the frosty. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> That's a little salty sweet oh, combination. That's, so that's what they call me. Oh, Mr. Salty Sweet. That's what they call me. I can it, see why. With yeah. that sultry voice. That this is a such a sensual voice. What? Ladies, stay away. This is Sam's night show. I'm married. My voice is so sensual right now. Oh yeah, so that was uh, some interesting interesting so though they're not doing the dynamic pricing because <laughs> naturally people are like so are you going to charge us more for this, you know, this frosty because there's a lot of people there or less people there? That'd just be bullshit. Like dinner time, it's like six bucks for a frosty, but you go in the morning, it's like 40 cents. Well, I, the thing is, I doubt they were going to do the bottom part of the dynamic. Right. It's probably your baseline is what it is, and then it, they're only going to charge for more. Sure. But Can't interesting. You. I wonder if things go down that route a little bit more in the future. Yeah. Who knows? Everybody's just trying to use utilize AI to their advantage, and this was one of the ways to do that, I think. Swing I do like the... the the uh, they had the dynamic menu changes, not the pricing, but items. Um, that's called going from breakfast to lunch balls. That's they not, do that anyways. Yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, right. that's been around for a minute. Cool. All right, riddle me this, Lucas. You're about to get riddled, oh, bro. These are tough. Too. Are these tough ones? I have no idea on these. Um, <laughs> what? All right, Lucas, you're going to be riddled right now. Ready? Yes. What has four wheels and flies? Oh Lord. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You're not even going to guess? Well, like an airplane does. They have wheels. They fly. Yes. So that's, I mean, this is the clever side of it. This is a garbage truck. Ah, uh, I love it. That's six wheels, by the way, so that's not. Uh, oh, that's a great point. That's that, Those are all, those are back uh, four dualies too. So that's got like ten wheels. Uh, eight. You're right, Sam. Ten. Yeah. yeah. And so plane. So anyways, has wheels and flies. It flies. could be a plane, but also uh, yeah. I get so it. That's going to be a half because a plane does have that. I'll but take a half there. I didn't think you were going to give me a half there. I'll I, give you I half like this one. Look at those big flies. A plane does have wheels and flies. Yeah. But different types of flies. Obviously. For sure. So yeah. yeah. All right. So um, I think you've got this before, but we'll give you free because you're not getting the back one. No. Um, what has 13 hearts but no other organs? Yeah. Um, 
we were thinking i was thinking like some sort of animal like there's an like an octopus has like a weird or- organ structure um but i was also thinking like a deck of cards mm-hmm. here and so i'm gonna go deck of cards you are correct let's a deck go of cards has uh ace to king of hearts which i believe is that's 13 52 pickup bro Fifty-two car game, pickup. It's fun. Mm-hmm. My yeah. fifty-two car pickup. I tried that a few times. My it's not card. It's not called fifty-two card pickup. It's, it's just called. fifty-two pickup. And they throw all the cards on the ground. You got to pick you them go, up. Yeah. And then make little kids do that. Yeah. My um, I used to have a harmonica, and my grandpa Wait, would tell back me back up. What? Say that again. I used to have a harmonica. Okay. What'd you do with it? Did um, you like play music? I I don't remember a little bit. Yeah. I, I used to have a freaking uh, synthesizer. Yeah. Of harp. Yeah, so, you, uh, you but you got yours when you're like 20 years old. I got I had a I had a um harmonica when I was like 8. Oh, you'd have been a cute little 8-year-old running around with I a did and my harmonica. grandpa used to say go play the song far far away. <laughs> meaning go far away and play. <laughs> he didn't like it. Yeah. All right, I, Lucas, I bet, you are, I bet it sounded beautiful. Well, yes. Yeah. I'm so musically talented. One and a half for two. You ready? Oh, yep. What type of cheese is made backwards? Mm. I don't know. I, I was. It's not like actual cheese. Like there's not like a process to make goat cheese. Yes, there is. Oh, I mean that's that is the answer to this. It's not goat cheese. It's not Swiss cheese. Okay, it's not you're cheddar saying, cheese. Yeah, you're saying it's not is a that type correct? Of che- correct. It's not like an actual type of cheese. Correct. I don't think so. Uh, okay. It is a type of cheese. Oh, it is a type of cheese, but you don't know that. Uh, is it spelled like backwards a certain way? I I don't know. Show me the answer, bro. Pull up the answer is, get it, made backwards, and it's yes. also a type of cheese, e damn and made. That's what I figured. I just couldn't think of the uh, the word that would so be something a, a backwards. Pro tip for you going forward, if it ever says backwards, just go to the word right before it and guess it. Gotcha. Because we've done that a few times, I think. I, I, don't, I still wouldn't have known, known that. What would I have said? E-made. Is the answer e-made? It's e edam or e damn. Oh, EDAM, yeah. So EDAM is so even that. I'd been like, uh, is the answer EDAM? So you were one. So you're one and a half or three. You're average, fifty yeah. percent. It's about right for me. About your free throw percentage? No, it's four, four out of five. Free throw. This isn't a free throw. This is harder than a free throw. I yes. made forty-seven in a row before Sam. I'm forty-seven. Practice. I made. I made. In my driveway, I made 19 threes in a row before. I, mine's 17 is my – so you got me by two. I there. was – I never shot. You were much better three. But I had a little – I could shoot. I just yeah. never really did. Yeah. You, I, and I your dad, ha- you got that from your pop. Yeah, I did. I, I yeah. used to shoot a little bit, but I'd never shot as much. I got a 50% career. You one for point, two, baby. Two for four. Ooh. That's hot. Just saying. All right. We heading into true or false, Sam? Let's do it. All right. Now it is my turn to stump you, Samuel. All right. Number one of three, electrons move faster than the speed of light. So, <laughs> what are you gonna what are you gonna reason this? <laughs> yes, I think this is how I arrive at the right answer. Yeah, this is so much harder than riddle stuff, by the way. But anyways, I um. Because they try to trick you. I say this every time. I mean, I don't think Riddle's that's trying to help you. This is trying to trick you. Yeah. Because the speed of light, I think there's things faster than the speed of light. I don't know if like. electrons are part of that. <laughs> what? Like, like wh- what is an electron? <laughs> electron is something inside of a nucleus, inside of an atom. There we go. Something uh, like that. Electrons move around like crazy inside yeah. atoms. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but speed of light super fast. It's so. very fast. Yeah. They're both fast, I think. <laughs> very this fast. Is like, it's a close race. Yeah, it's a very close race. It's going to be like a photo finish on yeah. this one. But I'm going to go with Which false. One? So speed of light's faster? Yes. That is correct. Great job, Sam. One of one. You're almost there to beat me. All right. Speaking, sp- sticking with light, um, not necessarily the speed, but the direction. Uh, light only travels in a straight line. I mean, that, I'm not going to give my answer yet, but I don't know that that can be true because lightning, I think, is light moving. That's not a straight line. It zigzags. I think when I draw it, it zigzags. I think when I see it in the sky, it zigzags. And then, yeah, I would assume even like even if they like point it, it's still like doing a little bit of something that's going to move. 
So I'm going to say light does not travel in a straight line. False. Thank you. That is incorrect. <laughs> light not... only travels in a straight line. What is lightning then? So if, even if it zigzags, right? I think what it means is it can only go like there. Then it has to turn there. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if lightning zigzags. I just that is how I draw it too, though. <laughs> but you see, lightning in the sky it does that. But if you think how I thought about it, and I probably would have got that wrong too, but like. You know, like, uh, not prisms, but, like, mirrors. And, like, when light shines on mirrors, it has to, like, go off this mirror to hit that mirror to hit that mirror. Um, so, yeah, it is. It, it has to be straight. Well, I, I get that it goes in a straight direction. It goes in a direction, General but, like, a direction. line. Yeah. That one. I, appeal? No uh, appeal? I don't know. I don't want to cause a scene. All I don't right. know that that's right. All right, one of two. Depends what I do in this next one. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> You can't go back. That's the thing. Yeah, it has I to be that it's, question. It's, it's our show. I do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, all right. Uh, the percentage of students in the U.S. who have taken loans to get through college is declining. So the percentage of students. So this is like so they're they're in college. So we're not talking about like percentage of people who go in, no, like the percentage I, of populations, percentage of actual students. So it's not like the percentage of the population. Correct. Okay, so that makes a little bit of a difference. People like. that are going to college. Of the people that are going to college. My boy Jeff says oh. lightning is a frequency wall, so deal with that. Oh, man. Jeff Harvey, our boy. Where, I don't know where that falls Jeff, here, but Jeff I, Harvey I like is it. incredible. He's one of our Jeff. I know he's all. Yeah. He's so positive Jeff's in the group. Stone. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, of the people that are going to college, the amounts that are taking out loans for colleges, is it going up or going down? That's that's tricky. That um, is tricky. So I think that like why are they so the percentage of people going to college is that going down? Do, I would think you agree? So, yes. I think so too. So, but the percentage of so I would think more people are getting in. So why would they not take a loan because they get a scholarship and have cash for it? Well, yeah, or their parents more parents. I mean, there's paying? there's been all that money flooded yeah. into the system, so maybe more parents are paying cash for it. Um, yeah. So this could be a trick. I'm going to say false. Less people are taking. No, false would be, so the percentage of students is declining. Yes, true. Okay, it's false. <laughs> I'm going to peel but the second I, one. I would have said that, too. That is the reasoning that I would have came up with, like more money into the system, you know, more wealthy people going to college, therefore less loans being taken mm -hmm. out. But uh, what this is saying is uh, the percentage is actually of people taking loans is, is in increasing, which is a little surprising to me. Yeah. So I would appeal that one. I'm appealing one of the two, so we're got one and a half. <laughs> no, you got one. <laughs> Just if you appeal, doesn't mean you get it. Does it? <laughs> no. Oh fuck. Okay, fine. All right. All Those right. were tough. Those were tough. Those were yeah. tough. So I'm excited about. So, Luke's and I own 47 million dollars worth of real estate we bought without using a dime of our own damn money, and we are going to take you back to 2014, and we are going to talk about our very first rental property in our deal of the week segment. We're going to do a deal of the week every single week. It could be something we've done in the past. It could be something we're working on right now. It could be something a deal we got under contract. But right now, we're going to go back in time to Saturn, talk about our very first rental property, Lucas. Let's kind of give the story behind it because most people watching, I think are probably wanting to buy their first rental property or will be very, very close. So we're gonna talk about Saturn is what it's called. So Lucas, I'm going to open the story up and you fill in the gap. So in general, Lucas and I visited over 35 properties we uh, and we had 22 banks tell us no before we got this very first deal. So it did not fall into our laps. Yeah. Like the stripper did on your bachelor party. This did not fall into our laps. She did not. No, I'm kidding. I just, hopefully yeah, she's <laughs> listening so I can get you a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Um, and the, the funny thing about this house is we still had our plan of 10 houses in 10 years, uh, but it was going to take us 20 houses to get there Yep. because we had to flip one, make profit, and use that profit as a down payment on our rental. So, so our plan on this one was to buy it, fix it up, sell it, yep. take the profit, Very and put first 20% house down. Because we didn't know. I knew you could borrow money to flip a house. Yeah. Watch Flipper Flop, all the shows on HGTV. They borrow money from yep. their rich friend, and then they, you know, or the thought at the time, borrow money from the rich friend, split the profit. So I knew you could do that. So our goal was to buy a house, fix it up, sell it, pay your lender back, take the rest of the profit, put 20% down because we didn't even have 20% down for a $100,000 house. So so mid rehab, we met uh, the great Brian Schroeder, and he told us about this little, Brian Dean. little hack. Little hack. And then uh, we kind of took it to the next level and did a couple hundred of them and uh you know created a course around how to do it yourself too so um the, the cool part about it is like you don't have to have the money to 
build a rental portfolio. You don't have to put a down payment every time, but you have to find distressed properties at a discount. So that's why we, we, we knew we were looking for a discount. We just didn't know we could turn that exact property into a, rent, uh, a rental property. But we were looking for rundown houses because we wanted to make a profit to flip. Yes. So, and, and I remember specifically, we were we bought the property. We were just beginning the rehab. We were doing as much work as we could. We were going evenings, weekends. Yes. Um, there, uh, fifteen hours a weekend, we were there. Um, every single weekend, you had your routine of going to get your butt sauce, freaking quick trip breakfast, right? Mm, so good. And then go and we'd work for fifteen hours every single weekend. And in the middle of that, we met a local wholesaler. We're for Fast Routes, a company we now own. We went to go visit him at his office to talk through us, getting us more deals yeah. and what we were looking for. And we ran into Brian. And Brian, we told him our plan, like we want to buy rentals, but we're flipping this first one because we don't have down payment. And he said, why don't you just refinance it? Why don't you just go to a bank and get a refinance for 80% of it and pay your lender that way? We're like, what does that even mean? Yeah. It sounded like he was speaking Japanese, but we broke it down and understood it and asked some questions, and that's the start of it all. That is the start of it all. I'm a t can I take back one more time? I know we're going Lucas. a little bit out of order here, but looking for that property, like yes. you said, 35-plus properties we looked at, and we barely knew what wholesaling was at this time. Mm -hmm. I think we had a relationship with one or two people. Not even a relationship. I think we were getting sent deals from one or two other mm -hmm. local wholesalers, yep. right? So Shalisa. That was, that could have been during that was that our time. second deal. Yeah. Um, Villa Donna was yeah. Shalisa. That's what we used to pay back Steve. We'll get into that, but yeah. For sure. So uh, I think there was a couple other ones that we uh, were sent deals and we looked at um, that never worked out at the beginning there. But the majority of these deals that we're looking at were on the MLS. It was 2014, the market height. Had, no, not quite, definitely hasn't recovered yet. And uh, a lot of bank owned properties still out there on the market. And uh, we didn't have our license. Uh, so my mother-in-law recently got her license, shout out Robin. So she would show us five houses a week mm -hmm. uh, on this. And it took us at least seven weeks to go to go find a deal. I think it took us. It took us a while. We looked at a lot. A you looked at some, we looked at some together. It took us like four months. Took us a while. We four looked at a ton months. of them. We bid some, didn't get. We didn't really understand. We're like, And some of them. Uh, we were, you know, a part of it was uh, our private lender gave us a hundred grand um, line of credit. Yeah. He's like, well, I'll give you a hundred grand. I remember looking at some houses that we had to buy for like maybe 95 and need 30 mm -hmm. grand. We, we couldn't do it. So we had to find something. And back in this day, it wasn't near as hard as it is now as far as because the, the price points have almost doubled. Yeah. But um, we were trying to find a house we could buy and fix up for under a hundred grand. So yeah. that was part of the, buy the and fix up. That was part of the constraint. And especially this area, you'll get you'll see the numbers here in a minute. But uh, this now is it would be a dream to even buy something at this price, much less buy and fix it up for under a hundred grand. But anyway, I think it was listed for like seventy grand. We offered like seventy five, no, eighty grand. They offered we offered seventy five. And uh, they countered at 77 and we took it. Yep. So yeah. we, we bought it for 77. We got $100,000 from a private lender. We bought it for 77000 and it needed about $30,000, $35,000 worth of work. Gotcha. Um, you know, raining our initial numbers and we didn't really know, but looking back, that's what it needed. But we just rolled up our sleeves yeah. and did the sweat equity side to get it under a hundred thousand dollars. We tore down the cabinets. We did a bunch of, I remember both of our parents coming out and helping out. I remember doing the landscaping, cutting down mm -hmm. like big stuff with my dad and trenching out like the stuff. So we, we did a lot of it ourselves to get mm -hmm. it under that hundred thousand dollar mark. You were like, wait, what? But you get yeah, it now. We definitely did. Yeah. We, I think we, we met one of our contractors that we ended up using for a long time at this first house. And he did some uh, stuff that we didn't necessarily know how to do, like hang the cabinets and, some other little countertops we countertops yep. we didn't know so we we hired a little bit out just small pieces but we did the majority of this and that we we became experts and lucas was a huge expert at, at like going in the attic so lucas was so good at walking the attic of this place so yeah it had it had a some sort of a electrical issue or something so you went so i was attic. up there with our contractor looking at the electric issue and um i did not know uh that you had to step on um, the ceiling the trusses. Trusses. Yeah, the ceiling truss. Yeah, the truss. Um, so I, thought, you step? I just thought you could step on the drywall and it would support you. And what I, happened? I fell right through mm -hmm. um, and my leg uh, got caught in the truss and I was like 
sideways hanging upside down over the bathtub uh, through a giant hole in the ceiling. Yep, you're not and, a little human. Um, yeah, I, I messed up my knee pretty good for Didn't a while. Didn't tear your meniscus or something? Uh, I, th- I think um, my MCL was damaged for a long time. You probably still feel a little bit. So Lucas yeah. stepped through that drywall right, right, right. Yeah. Fell right through. Straight away. Well, I learned that lesson. As Bluey would say. I just didn't go in any attics after that. But anyway, that was funny. Um, welcome to the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> the my boy Jeff. Um, so, no, I, I, yeah, so a lot of fun stories about that. We um, bought it. We were fixing it up. We did as much as we could. We had some contractors that we hired. I remember another story, Lucas. Um, we were trying to get the the um, uh, the uh, sewer uh, what I'm trying to blank and stack. We're stack. trying to get the stack going. And we like, uh, I remember there was like a hole, like corrosive at the bottom of the stack. Yeah. And we were trying, Danny, our buddy and CFO now, he was, he was, we had to end up getting a, a permit, but he was trying to like, like put some coupling on the bottom to mm-hmm. keep from leaking. And my mother in law was there and she like peed and flushed the toilet. And when he was down there and got like <laughs> pee water all over his hands and he's like, pee sterile. I don't care. But anyways, a lot of interesting things happened on that very first deal. That's so fun. Yeah, it it was fun and it sucked and it was fun all at the same time back when we were doing it. There's just so much that you learn and don't know going through like you're not going to experience that unless you actually do it. No, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, we're in the middle of the rehab. We we decided to execute the burrs and keep this as a rental. So um, we have to find a finance partner on the back end of this thing. So luckily we each have W-2 jobs at this point. So uh, getting a rental loan shouldn't be a huge deal. Nope, shouldn't be. But you got to find the right bank that understands what you're looking for and, and likes to lend on this product. So we're calling literally every bank in the world. Like we start with the highest level. We'll call, well, I'm calling Bank of America trying to explain this Rocket process. Mortgage, give me a commercial yeah, loan. Rocket Mortgage, uh, U.S. Bank, Chase, like all these giant banks that uh, just don't make sense at all. So they didn't even know the people I talked to didn't even know what I was no, talking about. No, me neither. We probably explained it terribly. Oh, we, A, we didn't explain it right. Yeah. B, they did it. Even if we did explain it right, they didn't know. Right. So, uh, yeah, so we, we started real big and then we kept kind of working down regional and then and then we got to finally made some good connections in our, our local market. So that's why we love local banks so much. They understand this type of product. Uh, you know, the, how many branches you think, Sam, like five to 20 branches is mm-hmm. your sweet spot. Um, and, and that's what we found. We had one bank uh, uh, say yes and give us a shot. And uh, yeah, what what happened after that, Sam? Well, we, so we real quick to to take a step back, as you say, because you used to be a little bit better at, from like if you were if your feet were like an inch behind the three point line, you were a little bit better like a foot behind the three point line. Yeah, I'd rather scoot back a little just further. a little bit, not like yeah. you weren't like a about three feet. Good yeah, too. you oh, wet. It. Yeah, not at all. But anyways, a little well. bit further back, just let you use your legs a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I like that. Um, but anyway, so let's take a step back. We almost lost my train of thought doing that. Um, but we um, went to all these banks. We didn't really um, understand the process properly. And, yep, trying to get it lost because of my example. We'll just keep rolling through. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we went to the bank. Yep. Uh, we had, I, I don't remember exactly, I think around 99000 in it. So we bought it for yeah, um, that's about right. 78-ish, whatever, 77. We got 20000 22000 mm-hmm. in it. So we have $99,000 of the $100,000 yep. the private lender gave us money in the deal. We took the bank to the local bank. Uh, we took, a, or oh, that's what I was gonna say. Brian gave us this. He said, "Go to this bank." So yeah. literally, just just having a conversation with somebody that's done it, and like this, we're telling you this, like just two conversations, refinance yep. and go to this bank, completely changed everything. Yeah. So, anyways, we went to this uh, knowledge. That's leveraging. We leveraged his knowledge to completely do a one eighty. What we we're gonna do. The bank appraised the property for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Yes, which and, is great. Which is great because they were going to give us a loan for eighty percent of that, which, which is, is also great. One hundred thousand dollars. One hundred thousand dollars. So how are we going to pay back the private lender? What he what he gave us one hundred thousand plus interest, which was about another four thousand. Yeah. The time. So we owed our private lender one hundred four thousand, and we were only able to give him a hundred thousand. The good news is private lenders are relational based so we were able to kind of um, build that relationship and we had the relationship already so he understood the process he kind of was keeping tabs on things and the fact that I think Luke's the fact that we got him his principal back was huge yeah if we were if we weren't able to get him his full principal back yeah. I feel like and a little would, bit of interest wasn't a it? little bit yeah, yeah. Like so we're, 800 bucks yeah so if we weren't <laughs> able to do that I think yeah. things will look principal preservation is huge for a lot of these uh, private lenders yeah Absolutely. principal preservation private lenders Pringles yeah Pilgrims, P- 
people. Principles. Pronouns. Pronation. Principles. Princesses. Primary residence. Princes. Prince of Egypt. Poop. All right. So, um, so the, uh, so that we were able to get him his principal back plus a little bit of interest, and we owed him about four grand. And yeah. I, we, we weren't going to take it from our personal even if we had it. We didn't have yeah. a business account. I I'm, probably had like fifteen hundred bucks in my checking account yeah. at the time. So we couldn't. Uh, we weren't going to. We couldn't pay him back. So. Fortunately, Shalisa, who I talked about earlier, we had another property under contract, yep. and that property was a home run. Yeah, we, home we, run. we had so, so much equity so in there, deep. and so deep, you know nothing about that, but so deep that we bought that thing super deep, and we told him that we would pay him, I think, like from his 8% to 10%. We're going to be a little bit of a higher return if we can roll this into the next deal because yes. it's out longer, and he led us. And that next deal, we bought it so well yeah. that we were able to give him money, principal and interest back on that deal, plus the interest from this deal and and we still cashed and out we on still cash flowed yeah. like yeah. probably seven to eight grand out yep we did that was a deep deal dude we bought so we bought this house for uh seventy seven thousand we bought that house for forty four thousand dollars forty two i think it was forty two i think it appraised for like 88 or 92 yeah. and we put like 10 in it i don't even think we put that much because we did all the work again yeah and so we just bought the paint some flooring and it was in much better shape than the other house we, we didn't redo the kitchen no so I, yeah it was good we yeah. painted it we, all in all, february we painted the outside of the house in one, one weekend day. one day one day one day I don't, i'm sure we did i'm sure there's like paint like or I there's been like back there in a while i haven't had any calls like that paint job that sherwin williams paint is holding up shout out sherwin williams. well i'm sure it's holding up but there's it doesn't it's probably like not like solid there's probably like brush strokes and stuff in it but we rolled it some of it i think you have to like put that nah, we just jammed it under there we we you're doing you're good at doing that but so anyways uh, one final story for saturn our very first rental property yep. so um in order so we we found a property management company right <laughs> it was like hey we we think you could rent it for this, and it was like three hundred dollars lower than what we thought we rented for. We we're like, can we please try for this because we needed this to cash flow, and we ended up getting what we thought we could get. But in order to move somebody in, uh, we had to pass a municipality inspection. Occupancy, yep. Occupancy inspection. So, uh, you were there with yes. the ten, with the guy I remember, and uh, he he pointed out like a hundred things that yes. we had to do before the tenant was going to move in like in a couple days or something like that and you were so flustered I was, yeah, yeah i was because it was cold out we were he was there he yeah. was there to be support and i was like he's like you don't have like a hose bib so he's in back that's cold trying yeah. to get the hose bib in and i'm trying to like tuck like a wire for the garage uh, yeah. door opener like in some like <laughs> coil like tuck it so it's yeah. and then like there was like a a gap between like the ceiling or the ceiling in the basement and the first floor that had to be fire caulked yeah. or it was just a mess we've only had one tenant move out of that house yeah that's been, been two tenants yeah uh, for, that's why we don't have years. any updated pictures really because yeah, yeah it, it looks Which we'll get to that so it, two so two uh so that's two um tenants in 10 years 10 years yeah that's why that's how you cash flow so now property's worth 125 we paid our private lender back we made that all work we owed 100 so there's 25 grand equity we yeah. cash flow a little bit every single month now which is beautiful that is the house that made me from a negative net worth to a positive and i was like whoa just one property one property and we yeah. were able to make it work and it was messy but it was fun and yeah. we learned a lot and it kind of wet our appetite a little bit like we can do this yeah. at scale we did this we did so much of this wrong and it still worked out yeah. Um, and now, so just a quick juxtapose what real estate can do for you. It's worth 125 then. Now, I'm pretty confident that it's worth about 225,000. And we used to owe 100, and now we owe about 65,000. So we went from 25 grand equity to $120,000 equity in one property. Yes, it's been 10 years, but that's 120 grand is the average. Um, I don't remember. I think it's the average 401k or IRA, one of the two. But the average like retirement account in this country we got in one property, both using none of our own money. It was a super low price point. Like now, you can't get even get into it for yeah. that much. Yeah, and and we rented it out for I don't know 1095 or something. I think the Zestimate rental is like 1500. Do we want to pull that up now? Yeah, if we can. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, this is super basic. Like Sam said, with no professional picks at all. If you're watching us on any of the uh, the video platforms, but the Zestimate <sighs> is 2075. Um, which is not accurate so yeah yeah we could we could go in there and spend five or ten grand and list it for 230 right yeah. now probably uh the rent estimates probably a little low but still you know a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars like that just helps your cash flow as well um so we like to say you know the day one you buy a property is hopefully the the lowest cash flow day um and your smallest equity day so 
um, love it. Got some some pictures there. Those are probably from our phone. Yeah, uh, from the very first time. So we you can did see, yeah. we did not learn much. Uh, obviously, we learned a lot since then. So please take professional photos for your rental listings. And uh, yeah, man, it's a cute look, little house. Look, I love it. I love I'd that like house. I own that one in thirty I'd like years. I like thousands of those, man. Well, yes. Yeah. And apartment complexes. Yeah, and apartment complexes. Um. So cool. So that's our I very think it's first cool. property. We, we are own our yeah. first property mm-hmm. still. We we made that's it happen, fun. and it's yeah. got a lot of equity in it. Um, probably wouldn't sell that like just from like the sentimental nostalgia purposes. Nostalgia, yeah, yeah, for it, a long time. Yeah, probably not. No, especially because it's it's a great little area. And yeah. yeah, it's 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 going to have it's going to do the whole rule of over doubling in value in fifteen years. Yep. like real estate does, so it's going to do all that. So yeah, great property, a ton of lessons learned, uh, great fun experiences, and that that was the building block. That was the start of everything. Yeah. So that that we just kind of grew. Why do you have the that? hundred on there just i was hiding the answers from you because i know you like to peek yeah so much so. it worked mm-hmm. yes we'll do it again next time it, you did all right so that was our first that was our deal of the week i love that deal man all right motivation lucas let's get let's motivate these let's call it win look at motivate. this motivation motivate. wednesday see it get it motivation wednesday like wins oh i like that yeah cool all right lucas don't count the days make the days count muhammad ali Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay. Then Muhammad Ali. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you think about that quote? Oh, don't count the days. Make the days count. Um, I love maximizing every day. Um, I know we're not on this life for, uh, you know, a, de- a, a defined amount of time. We don't know when we're going to leave. So while we're here, make every day count, whatever that looks like for mm-hmm. you. You know, uh, do today what you would want to do every day. Maybe, maybe not. You know, every day you're going to be sitting on a beach, right? That has its time and place a couple times a year. Yes. <laughs> right? But doing that every day is not fulfilling to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you do throughout your day to make your day count? And what attitude do you carry through all the people that you interact with? I think that's the biggest part. Like, um, you know, I want to be energetic. I want to be enthusiastic. I want to show people that I care about them, uh, whether it's my family or a coworker, yep. right? So anybody I come across with, I want to make their day better than it was before I talked to them. And uh, that's one of the ways I make it count. And uh, don't count the days. That part of it, yeah. I don't know about that part. Honestly, that doesn't ring true as much as make the days count. Yeah, which I think is fine. You that that's what the thing is. You take whatever you want from it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's more of a play on words. But it's just don't worry about the number of days. Worried about like the what's in your days kind of thing. Yeah. So what what does that quote mean to you, Sam? Yeah. I, so I I agree. I think it's I think you defined it really well. Is what counts is subjective to whoever is doing it. But for me, like I'm thinking, like I crash at the end of it. I fall asleep before my head hits the pillow. Like I feel like. And it's not always efficient. It's not always even the right thing. But I, I put everything I can to every single day. Like I just, I hit, I hit the pillow and I'm out. I don't have to, I don't have any extra energy <laughs> to sit there and think about stuff. I don't have any extra time to like. I, I maximize the day. And a lot of that times with work and then family and then work again or work and then family and then like relaxing. But like I, I'm out at the end of every single day. So I feel like most days I do maximize for what counts for me. Yeah. But I think everybody's a little bit different. For I, sure. In general, just leave it, leave it all there. I think. Yeah. Getting going a little bit um a little bit uh out of the realm a little bit but um tim tebow had an interesting quote this is a little more religious aspect aspect to it but he he said something along the lines is um he he doesn't want to like be done with his life and and go into heaven with extra things he could have done like he oh, wants yeah. to he wants to end this life spent he For worded sure. it really well but just like end it end the days end the life just completely you gave it all like you're, you don't have a ton of extra energy at the that, end of everything that, that whether it's the end of your end of your particular day or yeah. into your Sim- life yeah that's similar right thing, that's yeah. what sleeping is for whether mm-hmm. it's sleeping for the night or sleeping for eternity yeah you know like let, leave it all out there and yeah good things will happen man yeah don't don't leave don't want to leave with uh, extra in the tank yeah for sure lay it all out there awesome don't yeah no he that was it that was the word quote i think it was he, he said he doesn't want to make it to heaven well rested yeah that's a good way to, a little it bit is. yeah I, and i love sleep yeah. but you know there's a time and place yes there's a time and place yeah. like not yeah. right now yeah Cool. All right. Let's 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 get to it. Uh, thank you for being here. If you're here, we're not done yet. We're going to shoot our outlines into the trash can to the game. We're tied, Ooh. I believe. But uh, thanks for four being four. here. Make sure to share this uh, with anybody who you're watching and make sure to subscribe on YouTube is where the best live experience is. Um, the podcast uh, podcast platforms as well. So four to four, we're going to shoot in the trash can now. Let's do it. Right handed. Right handed again. Right handed.
four to four. You got a chance. You got a chance to pull ahead. I will give you the key, but I don't think you. I don't want to. There's a key to this. No. Good shot. Five to four, up one. Don't get used to it. All right. See you guys later. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We hope you got some major value from our conversation. If you love what you learn, make sure you like, rate, review the show, and help us spread the word by telling a friend. If you'd like to learn more about working with me inside one of my programs, we'll have those links in the show notes, along with all our social media handles, so you connect with us there for free. If there's a real estate question you'd like us to answer, feel free to send us a message, and we'll cover it in an upcoming show.